Welcome to the Walk in Truth Christian Fellowship Church broadcast on the WITRN Network. Come join us as we study the Word of God together. Go get your Bible and let's see what the Holy Spirit is saying to us today. Heavenly Father, we come right now, God. We just thank you. We thank you for opening our minds and our hearts to your word. And we just love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 So the last time we were here, which was a couple weeks ago, we talked about um, Solomon's fall. Um, And we talked about um, how Solomon, uh, God has came to Solomon twice. And he told him, just obey my statutes. And if, let's go to De- Deuteronomy 17, 15 through 17. And we will review what he did wrong. Because we talked about this the last time we were in class. But I want to just get us back on track. Did you say 17? Yes, Deuteronomy. Okay. Yeah. Deuteronomy 17, 15 through 17. And Frida... Read um, 15. You shall surely set a king over you whom the Lord your God chooses. One from among your countrymen you shall set as king over yourselves. You may not put a foreigner over yourselves who is not your countryman. Okay, so Solomon was chosen by God, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, go ahead. Moreover, he shall not multiply horses for himself. Nor shall he cause the people to return to Egypt to multiply horses. Since the Lord has said to you, you shall never again return that way. And we we know that, and we talked about in chapters um, 8, 9, and 10, when we were here the last time, that he acquired horses for himself, and he got them from Egypt. (laughs) Okay? Mm -hmm. Go ahead. He shall not multiply wives for himself or else his heart will turn away, nor shall he greatly increase silver and gold for himself. And we know that he had 700 wives, 300 concubines, and a whole bunch of slew of other people, so we know he violated that, and he also, we we talked about this last time, he built, um, he built uh, high places for for his wives, right? Mm -hmm. And so then we also talked about he acquired a lot of silver and gold, to the point where he got some gold from a neighbor, and he gave the neighbor some bad land. Remember, we talked about yeah, that. Yeah. Okay. So, chapter eleven is going to really the part B because we're at First uh, Kings eleven um, nine is really going to be talking about. We have already the first part we've talked about how good Solomon was, and this last part is talking about what Solomon did wrong. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, and so. I want to uh, also remind everybody that, that um, in your package you had this the kingdom um, the kingdom um, spreadsheet, and so we are saying that David he ruled between a thousand to nine sixty two. He um, ruled over the north and south because they were together. He was God fearing. He did not do any idol worship, and he he um, was forty years in the kingdom. We talked to him about Ananijah. He he ruled for a couple of seconds, right? Yeah. And then now we're talking about Solomon's reign. He ruled both of them in the north and south. And he was God feeling, but also an idol worshiper. And he also ruled for forty years. Now, I keep talking about north and south. I want to explain this before we go any deep in chapter eleven, because I think it's important that we know what we're talking about. Okay? We're talking about these 12 tribes of of Israel, right? Mm -hmm. But I want to make sure that we know um, how we derive these tribes, the importance of the tribes, and how how significant it is in chapter 11, okay? So we go to Genesis 35. Sorry, yeah, Genesis 35. Sorry, I'm sorry, not Genesis 35. 
Genesis uh, um, 29 first. If you read chapters, Genesis chapters 29 through 30, and then go back and pick up in chapter 35, you'll understand um, the original tribes of Israel are actually Jacob's son. We also know that in Genesis 35 and 10, Jacob gets a new name called Israel. Okay, I'm doing this for a purpose because we're going to be talking about um, in chapter 12, and in, in the latter part of chapter 11, we're going to be talking about how God splits these tribes. So when I say north and south, I want everybody to understand what I'm talking about. I am not going to go through the whole chapter, but I'm, kind of, I'm going to give you where we, um, how it breaks up. In the, pam in the pamphlet, I did give you guys a reminder of the tribes. Mm -hmm. So um, starting at verse 29 and 31, through um, 35 in uh, Genesis, we find that we get Reuben, Simon, Levi, and Judah. And in chapter 30, um, starting at verse um, 6, we are gonna we get Dan, uh, Napatel, we get Gad, and Asher. Then we pick up um, in chapter 20, we get, I always mess his name up, Zebulun, and then in chapter 22, um, not chapter 22, verse 24 of chapter 30, we get Joseph. Okay? Then the last one is in chapter 35 of Genesis, verse 16 through 18, and it gives you how we get to Benjamin. 18 shows you Benjamin. So that is, the, that is Jacob's Israel's sons. Okay? Now, the tribes that we're talking about in 1 Kings is different because Joseph has two tribes in which he um, is represented for him. And it's important that we understand that because the, um, the, how, um, the tribe of Ephraim and um, Manasseh is going to be important in chapter 11. Okay? So if we went to Genesis 48. And if you read for yourselves, chapter I mean verses twelve through twenty, you would see how Israel, which is Jacob, blessed Joseph's sons, and that's Ephraim and Manasseh. Okay, so that is how it changed from we don't have a Joseph tribe; but they, he gets two tribes. Mm -hmm. It's important to understand where we're going in order to to uh, to understand that. This is quick. You can go. You um, you can read for yourself. The um, south tribes are Judah and Benjamin. Um, the note that I got from um, my commentary says that there was an arithmetic of um, Elijah seems flawed. He tore his cloth into twelve pieces, and we'll talk about that in a minute. And he gave ten to Jeroboam. But um, he told Solomon that he would keep one tribe. And they are saying that's not, if he's got 10 and Solomon got one, that's not 12, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. The answer is that the tribe of Benjamin, the tribe of King Saul, lay on the border of Israel and Judah and was divided by the northern secession. So, for example, Bethel, which is part of Benjamin, became the center of the northern false cult. But the majority of Benjamin seem to be incorporated in Judah. And we'll, and that's in verse 31 and 35 of, um, of the chapter 11. So north would be Judah and, and Benjamin. And then the rest of the tribes, which is Reuben, or Reuben, I'm sorry, Simeon, Dan, Naphtali, Gad, Asher, Issachar, Ziblum, Ephraim, Manasseh, are all on the north. So if I ask in the future... Who would, could, because this is going to be important, who ruled over what? When we get to chapter 12, we'll see Rehoboam is over Judah, which is the south. And we're going to see Jeroboam is going to be over Israel, which is the north. Okay? I'm going quickly because this is not what I really, I want everybody to understand <clears throat> that 
now at this when we after this chapter we're going to talk about the split and so we need to know what we're talking about mind you we didn't mention levi because levi is a whole separate tribe right and, priests. and they're priests correct yeah. mm -hmm. okay so we're going in chapter 11 and i wanted to i had gave that already in a handout and if you need it just uh, later um just ask me and i'll give it to you because it breaks down the tribes from Genesis 29 through 30, Numbers 1 and Revelation 7. So I want to make sure that um, when we're talking about the South, we know who we're talking about, and the North, who we're talking about. If we say Judah, we know we're talking about Benjamin and Judah. And if we're talking about Israel, we know we're talking about the other tribes. Okay? So when anybody's doing math, they'll know what's going on. Okay? So... Um, we talked about Deuteronomy 17, 15 through 17. Now let's go to 1 Kings chapter 11, verse 9. Now, what we, I want to understand, I want y'all to understand something. God appeared to Solomon twice already. That was in 3, 5, 1 Kings chapter 3, verse 5. And also, we just, we just got done with that two weeks ago in chapter 9, verse 2. And each time he said the same thing to him. Let me go, let's go back to um, 9 and uh, 2. Um, and he's, and, um, especially, um, I want to go down to verse 4. Stacy, can you read that for me? 9 and 4. <clears throat> and if you walk, if you will walk before me as David thy father walked in integrity of heart and in uprightness to do according to all that I have commanded thee and will keep my statutes and judgments, then I will establish the throne of thy kingdom upon Israel forever as I promised to, to David thy father, saying, There shall not fail thee a man upon the throne of Israel. Keep on reading. But if ye shall at all turn from following me, ye or your children, and will not keep my commandments and my statutes, which I have set before you, but go and serve other gods and worship them, then will I cut off Israel out of the land which I have given them, and this house which I have hallowed for my name will I cast out of my sight, and Israel shall be a proverb and a byword among all people. So God kept, he said this twice to Solomon. <clears throat> so somebody tell you something twice, it must be important. Mm -hmm. He said, follow my statutes and commandments. And the last time we talked, when we were here the last time, Frida, what did he do? He violated everything mm -hmm. that a king was supposed to do. Mm -hmm. Everything. It was nothing in Solomon, even though he had all his wisdom, he yeah. violated all of it. Yeah. So he idol worship. He violated the tenements of what to be a king. He had multiple wives. He did high places for the wives, right? He bought horses from the people who we they left Egypt, and he 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 stored silver and gold. He had a whole bunch where he didn't even need it. So bad, so he was just putting stuff gold on stuff, just gold on everything, gold on gold on gold. Like they say, racks on racks. That's how that's how Solomon was, racks on racks, for no reason. Gold everywhere on his palace. Now God's palace was once one thing, but his palace, all this everything had gold on it. Okay, so let's just remember when we go to chapter 11, verse 9, that God has already talked to him twice. So this is the third time that God has come to him, right? In chapter 9, I mean, 1 King 11 and 9, and this is what he says. And the Lord was angry with Solomon because his heart had turned away from the Lord, the God of Israel, who had appeared to him twice. And had commanded him concerning this thing that he would not go after other gods. But he did not keep what the Lord commanded. Therefore, y'all ready? Mm -hmm. The Lord said to Solomon, since this has been your practice and you had, you had not kept my com um, covenant and my statutes that I've commanded you, I will surely tear the kingdom from you and will give it to your servant. 
Does that sound familiar? Yeah. Well, who else happened to them like that? Saul. 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 Gave it to David. So just how David got the kingdom, <laughs> his son loses it. The, loses it the same way how his daddy got the kingdom. Mm -hmm. That's crazy, ain't it? Mm -hmm. But see, the but God it has mercy. Okay, He has mercy, and He says, "Yet for the sake of David, your father, I will not do it in your days, but I will turn it out of the hand of your son." Does that mm -hmm. sound familiar? Mm -hmm. Because David couldn't build the temple, Solomon could, right? right? Yeah. However, um, I, um, however, I will not turn away the kingdom, but I will give it one tribe to your son for the sake of David, my servant, for the sake of Jerusalem that I have chosen. Because God does everything for a reason. And so we know that the reason why they had to keep that um, the, the line had to be in Judah because we know that Jesus is going to come through there, right? Mm -hmm. um, so God is telling him now, you didn't listen to me. And because you didn't listen to me and I told you twice what to do and you ain't even got no repentant heart like your daddy because you just <laughs> erecting, let's think about he erecting God, he erecting high places to everybody, all his wives. And his wives did is the reason why he said his wives would turn his man heart away. He just loved and he would do whatever he wanted to do for his, his wives. And he worshiped whoever he wanted to worship and did whatever he wanted to do. He had all the riches in the world. He had everything a man desired. And you still messed up because you forgot to follow God's commandments. Mm -hmm. We cannot now let's let's not overly judge Solomon because God gives us everything we need and we covet and idolize things that we shouldn't. And we have wisdom and understanding because we have what Solomon didn't have. We have this word. And we still covet and idolize things we shouldn't. The word and the Holy Spirit. Correct. And so we got way more than he had. Now mind you, it was a whole bunch of statutes and covenants that he had to follow, but he knew, he knew his dad taught him what he needed to know. And he didn't have that repentant spirit as his father. So God is not going to, re and let's just think about it. He, gave, he made sure that he did not renege on his covenant with David. God always fulfills his covenant. He never reneges. We do. So we sit up here playing spades. We, we, we putting out stuff we, are, we already have. We renege all the way because we are self-motivated and not God-focused. And I say we because I'm included. Understand that? So God, um, so God says, you know what? I'm finna turn this away from you. I ain't gonna do it while you're alive. But understand there are consequences to your actions. Let's see where the consequences come. Now, let's set the stage. This whole time Solomon's reigned. He ain't built these temples. He built his palace. Have we heard of any fighting? No. We ain't heard about no wars. We ain't heard about nothing. It's been so peaceful, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's go, uh, Nancy, pick up at verse 14. First Kings 11, 14. No, we're just that. What? No, no, no. First you were in that just a second ago. Uh, 11 and 14. And the Lord raised up an adversary against Solomon, Hadad, and the Edomite. He was of the royal house in Edom. For when David was in Edom, and Joab, the commander of the army, went up to bury the slain, he struck down every male in Edom. For Joab and all Israel remained there six months until he had cut off every male in Edom. But Hadad fled to Egypt together with certain Edomites of his father's servants. Hey, Dad, still being a little child. Okay, let's stop. So let's go to 2 Samuel, chapter 8, verse 13 and 14. Stephen, 
Can you read that for me, please? And David made himself a name when he returned from killing 18,000 Syrians in the Valley of Salt. He also put garrisons in Edom. Throughout all Edom, he put garrisons, and all the Edomites became David's servants. And the Lord pre uh, preserved David wherever he went. Keep going. It, you just do um, 13 and 14. Okay. And so right there we see we see what they re refer to. So when um, Hey Dad escaped and w as a little kid, and somebody gave him solace, who, who, what story does that sound familiar to? Um, Jesus, when he was a baby, they played. No, no, uh, no uh, in the Old Testament. Just right on two my time, but Moses. Correct. Ding, ding, ding. So Moses, it was the same oh, way. Okay. okay. Let's go to First Chronicles 18. Can I ask a question, please? Yeah, go ahead. You probably get to, who are the Edomites? Then he saw the sin. Yes. I just wanted to make sure. All right. Okay. So, uh, Hold on. Let me make sure I'm at the... Oh, I'm in the wrong chapter. So, um, we need to go to First Chronicles. Yeah, I know we're going to go to Chronicles a couple times. First Chronicles 18. Travis, uh, First Chronicles 18, 12, and 13. And Abishai, the son of Zariah, killed 18,000 Edomites in the Valley of Saul. Then he put garrisons in the Edom, and all the Edomites became David's servants. And the Lord gave victory to David wherever he went. So now you see why Hadad is so angry. Mm -hmm. Because he was a royal line. So David and Saul went and destroyed all that. So now, Hadad is an adversary to Israel. Okay? Now, um, the commentary does not say um, what he did, but we're going to keep talking about him, okay? Mm -hmm. So let's go to, let's go back to 1 Kings chapter 11, verse 18. verse 18. Go ahead. They set out from Midian and came to Paran and took men with them from Paran and came to Egypt, to Pharaoh, king of Egypt, who gave him a house and assigned him an allowance of food and gave him land. And Hadad found great favor in the sight of Pharaoh, so that he gave him in marriage the sister of his own wife, the sister of Taphanes, the queen. The sister of Taphanes bore him the Nubash, his son, whom Taphanes weaned in Pharaoh's house. And the Nubash was in Pharaoh's house among the sons of Pharaoh. But when Hadad heard in Egypt that David slept with his fathers and that Joab, the commander of the army, was dead, Hadad said to Pharaoh, Let me depart, that I may go to my own country. But Pharaoh said to him, What have you lacked with me that you are now seeking to go, your own, go to your own country? And he said to him, Only let me depart. And so um, the note in um, the Bible says, Let me depart. Is, they are again um, comparing him to Moses in Exodus 2 and 10. They said, Had a good son grew up in Pharaoh's household, and as did Moses, Exodus 5 and 1, had they requested that Pharaoh allow him to leave Egypt. Hearing the deaths of David and Joab, he renounced, he, he renounced his easy position and possession in Egypt to return to Edom in order to regain his throne. His activities gave great trouble to Israel. And so, whatever he did, which we don't really know what he did, where we, um, it gave them great trouble. Mm -hmm. Okay? So that's one. So you remember, we had peace. So now, Solomon is getting trouble. Mm -hmm. And this is all because this man is mad, which he should be, that David and Saul have killed, and Joab have killed his people, and he's coming back. Okay? So, so that's one adversary, right? So let's go to 
um, 23, 1 Kings 23, I mean 11 and 23. Go ahead. God also raised up as an adversary to him, Rezan, the son of Iliada, Elida, who had fled from his master, Hadadazar, king of Zobah. And he gathered men about him and became leader of a marauding band after the killing of David. And they went to Damascus and lived there. And oh, look, you need to read that again. Hadad okay. And he gathered men about him. So from 23. You read that sentence again because you read it incorrectly. They missed it, didn't they? Uh -huh. And he gathered men about him and became leader of a marauding band after the killing of David. Not of David. After David, David did not get killed. killed. No, it didn't after say after killing the killing by David. David. By David. Right. Thank right. you. That's what I, I want to make sure. <laughs> we gonna we gonna make sure that the word is right. Yes. Nobody killed David. Yeah, David didn't get killed. He is after killing by David. Yes. <clears throat> okay, and that's why I had you read that again okay. because I don't want nobody leaving here Speaking saying that this okay. man killed David. Thank you. Okay. Go ahead. And they went to Damascus and lived there and made him king in Damascus. He was an adversary of Israel all the days of Solomon, doing harm as Hadad did. And he loathed Israel and reigned over Syria. And so we don't know all the stuff Razan did, but he was. Now you see Solomon got two people, one from uh, who's coming from Egypt and one from Syria coming in and acting the fool. Right? Let's go to Second Samuel. <laughs> Chapter eight. Verse three through eight. And Stacy, can you read that please? Second Samuel eight. <clears throat> David smote also Hadiazer the son of Rehob, king of Zobah, as he went to recover his border at the river Euphrates. And David took him a thousand chariots and seven hundred horsemen and twenty thousand footmen. And David hold all the chariot horses, but reserved of them for an hundred chariots. But when the Syrians of Damascus came to succor Hadiazer, king of Zobah, David slew of the Syrians two and twenty thousand men. Then David put garrisons in Syria of Damascus, and the Syrians became servants to David and brought gifts. And the Lord preserved David whithersoever he went. And David took the shields of gold that were on the servants of Hadiazer and brought them to Jerusalem. And from Beta and from Barothai, cities of Hadiazer, king, David took exceeding much brass. So now you see why the Syrians would have an <clears throat> issue with, with Israel. Because mm -hmm. David had defeated them. Let's go to 1 Kings 15, verses uh, 16 through 18. Travis, can you read that for me? And there was war between Azza and Baasha, king of Israel, all their days. Baasha, king of Israel, went up against Judah and built Ramah, that he might permit no one to go out or come in to Azza, king of Judah. Then Azza took all the silver and the gold that were left in the treasures of the house of the Lord and the treasures of the king's house and gave them into the hands of his servants. And King Azza sent them to Ben-Hadad, the son of Tabramon, the son of Hezion, king of Syria, who lived in Damascus, saying. So, I know we're not going to talk about that. We'll talk about that later. But you see now, Syria is coming back up. And that, and, and is, now all is a plague to Israel, right? Mm -hmm. And then they also talk about this in verse 20 and 1. And it says... Men had the king of Syria gathered all his army together, and two, uh, thirty-two kings were with him in horses and chariots. And then he went up and closed in on Samaria and fought against it. So Syria 
is 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 a force to be reckoned with for Israel now. Yeah. Because of Solomon's sin, because they had peace, remember? Mm-hmm. Now God is allowing people to come against them. Mm-hmm. Remember, we're gonna talk about later one day how God put them in captivity because of their their ignorance and their disobedience. Mm-hmm. So God can allow pe- uh, people to come against you when He's He He gave Solomon three warnings, two warnings, and now there's consequences. And he had a, it's not that a priest came to Solomon and said, God said blah, blah, blah. No, God came to Solomon. So if God comes to you and you ain't had no intercessory, <laughs> there's no reason for you be to misunderstand what God said. But because of that, this is what's happening in Israel. Okay? Now, we got the, in, um, we have the adversaries on the outside. The house of David will always be plagued about adversaries on the inside. Mm. So when we go to verse 26, let's go back to 1 Kings. Mm. And we're going to pick up on chapter 26. And um, I'm sorry, verse 11, verse 26. And we're going to be talking about Jeroboam. Um, And he is on uh, your handout. Um, Jeroboam um, will be ruling um, between 931 to 9:10. He will be ruling Israel, which is what? Which is it? Israel north or south? Israel north. Correct. Ding ding ding. We're gonna repeat that. It's north, and he ruled for 21 years. Okay. We're not gonna mark the boxes whether he was God fearing or idol worship because we're gonna get to that. Okay. So, let's see what's, what's going on with the internal adversary. Um, verse 26. Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, an Ephraimite of Zerida, a servant of Solomon, whose mother's name was Zeruah, a widow, also lifted up his hand against the king. And this was the reason why he lifted up his hand against the king. Okay, so let's make, let me, let me, where is he from? He's from Ephraim. So he's from the house of what? Joseph. Correct. Yeah. He is. From the, from the tribe of one of the tribes of Joseph. Mm-hmm. Okay? And the, the tribes of Joseph is uh Ephraim is the largest, most influential one. Okay? Even though he uh he's the is one of the largest, most influential ones. So it's important that we establish that. Okay? So let's go back. Let's go ahead. Solomon built the Milo. And closed up. Go to 27. Oh. And this was the reason why he lifted up his hand against the king. Solomon built the Milo and closed up the breach of the city of David, his father. The man, Jeroboam, was very able. And when Solomon saw that the young man was industrious, he gave him charge over all the forced labor of the house of Joseph. So that means that. Um, we talked about the forced labor um, back in 513 when Solomon was building up the temple and his house. He oh. used forced labor, which is slavery. Mm-hmm. And he saw how good Jeroboam was, so he was in charge of both Ephraim and Manasseh. Okay, okay. Everybody get what I'm saying? So Jeroboam was, so Jeroboam was in, for, in charge of the forced labor over both Etham and Manasseh. And so Solomon found he he had a he was in charge of it. So he was a official, right? He was mm-hmm. one of Solomon's people, right? Mm-hmm. Go ahead. And at that time when Jeroboam went out of Jerusalem, the prophet Ahijah the Shilonite found him on the road. And let's talk about this this prophet, okay? Let's go to um First Samuel. Okay. Let's go to First Samuel. I think I want to go one second. 
Okay. So, um, let's, um, let's go back to, to first King. Um, Ananijah was a prophet of the Lord. Yes, I was right. Um, who lived in Shiloh in a town of Ephraim, 20 miles north of Jerusalem. And the reason why I wanted to go to 1 Samuel because there was a note that I needed to read. And I was that's why I was momentarily confused. Sorry about that. So um, 1 Samuel chapter 1, verse 3 um, has a note that says, All of Israel's men were required to attend the annual feast at the central sanctuary. Uh, and Naka regularly attended these festivals with his wives. The festival referred to, and I'm just going to uh, refer to here, was probably the Feast of the Tabernacle, but I want to go down a little farther. And this is talking about, um, it's basically talking about they were, they were located in Shiloh. And the reason why it's important because Adonijah is a priest in Shiloh. So that's why I wanted y'all to know who he was from, okay? So he's uh, Ahijah, he's from Shiloh. And so he's coming to Jeroboam and he's giving him a word. Now we can go back to 1 Kings. Okay. So I'm finishing up, I'm in verse 29. Okay. So Ahijah the Shilonite found him on the road. Now Ahijah had dressed himself in a new garment and the two of them were alone in the open country. Verse 30. Then Ahijah laid hold of the new garment that was on him and tore it into 12 pieces. And he said to Jeroboam, Take for yourself 10 pieces, for thus says the Lord, the God of Israel. Behold, I am about to tear the kingdom from the hand of Solomon and will give you 10 tribes. But he shall have one tribe for the sake of my servant David, and for the sake of Jerusalem, the city that I have chosen out of all the tribes of Israel, because they have forsaken me and worship Ashtoreth, the goddess of the Sidonians, Chemish, the god of Moab, and Milcom, the god of the Ammonites. And they have not walked in my ways, doing what is right in my sight, and keeping my statutes and my rules as David his father did. Okay, so now we see when I was talking about in the note before, he turns up. What is this reminiscence of? Oh, um, <clears throat> when I want proper, when he tore his wife, his, um, he tore his what? His concubine with 12 pieces. Mm -mm. Nope. First Samuel, chapter 15, verse 28. Jeremy, read that for me. First Samuel chapter fifteen verse twenty eight. That's page three ninety eight. Jay. That's at the top of the page. Three ninety eight. Page three ninety eight. Okay. First Samuel. I'm telling you what page it is. Let's say it again. First Samuel. First Samuel fifteen verse twenty eight is on page three ninety eight in your book. Samuel said to him, The Lord had torn the kingdom of Israel during the day and had given it to one of your neighbors, to one better than you. So, just he is the same thing that Saul, when Saul sees his skirt, it tore, and this is exactly what's happening to the house of Solomon. Mm -hmm. It's being torn into pieces. Oh, yeah. And so, this is symbolic to what God already told Solomon. Solomon already knew this was coming. And this is going to happen to his son. But now this is confirmed by the prophet and telling Jeroboam, I'm giving, God is going to give you these ten tribes. Now we already talked about where it's in, that um, Solomon's son was going to get Judah and we already talked about that Benjamin was included. Correct? Yes. Okay. So um, I want to make sure that I don't I don't miss what I want to talk about. Hold on one second. Uh, 
Okay. We'll get that to uh we fin we finished that when it said he said uh because of David, right? That that he didn't keep that he didn't he keep built the for David. Like, like, like his dad did. Okay. Like David did. Okay. That was a all right, so um, let's go to verse 30, um, 38 to 39 of First Kings 11, 38 to 39. And if you will listen to all that I command you and will walk in my ways and do what is right in my eyes by keeping my statutes and my commandments as David, my servant, did, I will be with you and will build you a sure house as I built for David. And I will give you, I will give Israel to you. And I will afflict the offspring of David because of this, but not forever. Okay, so he says, I'm going to give you this, right? To Jeroboam. To Jeroboam. I'm going to let you be king over Israel. I'm going to make sure the house of David still has Judah, right? But what do you have to do to keep this? Well, he told everybody else, right? Okay. But he also said, but I will afflict the offerings of David because of this, but not for ever. And we know that God's word did not be void because Jesus came from the house of Judah, right? But let's go to Ezekiel 37. My good old Ezekiel, y'all. Chapter 15. Frida, I mean, not chapter 15. Ezekiel 37, verse 15, y'all. Ezekiel 37, 15. And read from 15 to 28. The word of the Lord came again to me, saying, And you, son of man, take for yourself one stick and write on it for Judah and for the sons of Israel, his companions. Then so, so let's make sure we understand. He's talking about Judah, which is the south, right? Yeah. And the sons of Israel, the north. Right? Okay, yeah. Okay, go ahead. Then take another stick and write on it for Joseph, the stick of Ephraim, and all the house of Israel, his companions. Then join them for yourself one to another into one stick, that they may become one in your hand. When the sons of the people speak to you, saying, Will you not declare to us what we mean by these? Say to them, Thus says the Lord God, Behold, I will take the stick of Joseph, which is in the hand of Ephraim, and the tribes of Israel, his companions, and I will put them with it, with the stick of Judah, and make them one stick, and they will be one in my hand. The sticks on which you write will be in your hand before their eyes. Say to them, Thus says the Lord God, Behold, I will take the sons of Israel from among the nations where they have gone, and I will gather them from every side and bring them into their own land. And I will make them one nation in the land on the mountains of Israel. And one king will be king for all of them. And they will no longer be two nations and no longer be divided into two kingdoms. They will no longer defile themselves with their idols or with their detestable things or with any of their transgressions. But I will deliver them from all their dwelling places in which they have sinned and will cleanse them. And they will be my people and I will be their God. My servant David will be king over them and they will all have one shepherd. And they will walk in my ordinances and keep my statutes and observe them. They will live on the land that I give to Jacob, my servant, in which your fathers live. And they will live on it they and their sons and their sons' sons forever. And David, my servant, will be their prince forever. I will make a covenant of peace with them. It will be an everlasting covenant with them. And I will place them and multiply them and will set my sanctuary in their midst forever. My dwelling place also will be with them and I will be their God and they will be my people. And the nations will know that I am the Lord who sanctifies Israel when my sanctuary is in their midst forever. So we know this is a prophecy that Ezekiel is proclaiming, right? Yeah. And that um, all of this um, is, you know, he said David would be the king of them. Of course, we know he's talking about Jesus, right? So let's go, let's, um, uh, I want to, uh, 
don't know if I want to go here or not. because it made a reference to the tribe of Joseph. So now the tribe of Joseph is back in Ezekiel, but I'll leave that alone. If you want to know about the rest of the tribes and, or that's going to be going forth after Ezekiel, you'll go to Revelation 7, and I'll let you look at that yourself. Let's go back to 1 Kings. So now we see that God took the tribes of Israel away from the house of David but it won't be forever yeah. that the tribes will be unified one day right mm -hmm. we also know that this is a this is applying to the um, nation of Israel okay the nation of, of they are he's talking about them it's not us we're talking about the Old Testament right, right. Mm -hmm. so um, Let's go to verse uh, chapter 1 Kings, chapter 11, verse 40. Just read 40 for me, Nancy. Solomon sought, therefore, to kill Jeroboam. But Jeroboam arose and fled into Egypt to Shishkuk, king of Egypt, and was in Egypt until the death of Solomon. Who does that sound like? David. David, it does. When Saul was chasing him. Yeah, he ran away. Right? Because Saul knew that David was going to be the next king. So yeah. now Solomon know. Not because they said, well, nobody ever like, we don't know how Solomon knew because this was a private prophecy. God had already told Solomon. He didn't say who it was going to be. But of course, people play telephone and tell stuff, right? Right? Mm -hmm. And so now Jeroboam got to run. Because... What was the reason why um, Solomon's brother had to be disposed of? Because he rallied all of the people oh. to, to, to appoint oh, himself as king. Right, but, but his brother that. said, no, I'm going to let you live. But what did he do? He requested his, um, he he told his, his mama. concubine. Right, and he knew if he got the concubine, he would have a mm -hmm. challenge to the what? Little to the and so Solomon's mind, I got to kill Jeroboam because Jeroboam is next in line to get this kingdom. And I don't want my, my son not to have anything. Solomon knew this was going to happen. And he got word that Jeroboam was going to get this, right? So Jeroboam did what David did. Ran and went to another country. Didn't David do that? Yeah. Even though God ain't tell him to do that, but we ain't going to go back into that, right? Mm-hmm. So through the prophecy, it says, the note says, though the prophecy was private, the king heard about it, and Jeroboam became a marked man, guilty in Solomon's eyes of rebellion and worthy of the death penalty. Because if anybody that can challenge the throne, you got to kill that person. You see what I'm saying? Um, Shikshak was the founder of the 22nd dynasty in Egypt. And they talked about how he reigned and he invaded Judah during the reign of Rehoboam. So he's this man is also going to have something to do during Rehoboam's reign, okay? Mm -hmm. Which is Solomon's son. And so now, <laughs> y'all see, in this chapter, a lot of history is repeating itself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What happened with David, it's, it's, it's like almost a mirror, right? Because it's a little bit of what happened with Saul because of Saul's rebellion. Because Saul did exactly what Solomon did. Didn't obey God's commandments. And everybody said, okay, so what's the difference between Solomon and David? The difference between Solomon and David is he might, he might have violated a commandment or two, but he always repented. Mm -hmm. David always repented, right? Mm -hmm. Solomon ain't repenting. He just building high places for his women. He ain't saying, I'm sorry. When God gave him this pronouncement, this would, he had the opportunity, just like his dad, say, you know what, God, I'm sorry. Let me destroy all these idols. Let me get my life together. I apologize because you gave me this position. He didn't do that. All that wisdom that you had, and you didn't do it. Because God put that those the Deuteronomy 17 in place to give you Hey, this is what's going to cause you the downfall. Mm -hmm. The women, 
the cars, which is how of horses. <laughs> Women, cars, horses, and money is going to be your downfall because the last time when we were here, uh huh, I talked about how success can become addictive, how success can come become deceptive, and how success can be an illusion. And all of this, the success, the houses, the money. The you know the houses, the money, the cars, the women or horses, whatever. All of this was, became his downfall because he started to worship the things and the idols that came with it instead of focusing on God. Now I don't want nobody to leave here and say Solomon didn't want God fearing because he was. He started off with good intentions, mm -hmm. but good intentions don't don't help you. You got to be consistent in this walk. And God knew that he was he was susceptible to these things. And that's why he kept reminding him. Solomon knew about the downfall of why his dad couldn't build the temple. Solomon knew he had wisdom. He had everything a man could desire. And he had ordained by God. And he allowed others to distract him. Right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. He allowed others to distract him. And that and that was Solomon's downfall. <clears throat> and that messes up his legacy. Because of all the wisdom he had about dividing the baby and building the temple and doing all this, the, all, the one thing that he did not do correctly was continue to serve God with his whole heart and follow his statutes and commandments. And because of his decisions, it split the kingdom. Right? Mm -hmm. Let's go back to 1 Kings 41. 11 and 41, sorry. Now the rest of the acts of Solomon and all that he did and his wisdom, are they not written in the book of the acts of Solomon? And the time that Solomon reigned in Jerusalem over all Israel was 40 years. And Solomon slept with his fathers and was buried in the city of David, his father. And Rehoboam, his son, reigned in his place. So, Solomon is dead. Right? Mm -hmm. And so, um, Solomon's gone. So now we know then when we come back in chapter 12, now all heck is going to happen when it comes to the uh, Israel as a whole. Mm -hmm. We got, now mind you, we got these two outside adversaries. We got the in, inside adversary. So now we need to see what's going to go happen. Now let's, let's just talk about this. When we start in chapter 12, we're going to see that the people really didn't want to split. But because of people's hearts, they had to. Okay? Because one of the main issues, um, and, and it talks about it in the commentary, the reason why Jeroboam was so uh, upset is was because of the issue of the forced labor. Um, it's because of how hard they had to work and what they had to do. And, the, and, and Solomon used his forced labor to get the things he wanted done. Yeah. And they got done, but what, at what expense? So I want you to think about he wasn't that. Was he in charge over that? Jeroboam was. So he got the Only of the two tribes, not all of them. Okay. Um, there was other people in, force, um, in charge of slave labor. Okay. But he, but he enslaved his own people. Yeah. And that's why he's mad because one of the rules were. Because you weren't supposed to use You weren't own supposed people. to enslave your brothers. I thought right. he enslaved the Hittites and the Amorites and all the other people. He did. To do their labor. He did. But if you, when we get into chapter 12, you'll see that, that he also used, and in, in uh, it's not only in chapter 12. Let's go back since you want to go there. We talked about this. Let's go back. Because when we, we talked about um, in um, chapter, I believe, chapter 5. We talked about how he split up, how he did his labor. Mm -hmm. yeah, Pastor and, and one of the labors is that they talked about how 
some of the uh uh Israelites okay. had to go back and forth, but let's find Verse it. Verse thirteen. I see five thirteen. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I got that in my note. Thank you. Verse thirteen. Okay. King Solomon drafted forced labor out of Israel. And drafted a number of 30,000 men, and he sent them to Lebanon, 10,000 okay. a month in ships. Okay, yeah, the two months. Oh, okay, three okay, got, got it. Lebanon, got two it. months at home. Uh-huh. Okay. Got it. Okay, yeah, I forgot about that. All right. All right. Okay. So you, they weren't supposed to do that, and they were mad about mm. it. Oh, okay. I thought that was When you get drafted, bad. it's not voluntary. Mm -hmm. When you they draft when they was drafting people for wars to go die, they didn't say pick me, please. <clears throat> they this you gotta go. And if you didn't go, you were marked as a deserter. Or not a deserter, it's what's they what was they called? Um what was um Dropped off. <sighs> not AWOL. Dropped off. Draft, but you deserter. that's a deserter. That's a deserter, okay. Because yeah. I um and Muhammad, remember not Muhammad, is it Muhammad? No, Ali no, was no, um no. was um he drafted and he drives the draft. And they looked at him negatively. <clears throat> so these people didn't say, Pick me, I'll go help build, get this stuff from um Lebanon. They were drafted. This was forced labor. Mm -hmm. Right. And that goes all the way back to when Samuel told them, if you guys want a king, this is what he's going to do. He's going to uh -huh. enslave He told them. Yeah, he's going to enslave your He's going to enslave your own people. So all of this happened. David did Now, mind you, David gave Solomon instructions, but he didn't tell David to. David didn't tell Solomon to do that. Right. His brothers, yeah. So they have a right. When we, this is, this is setting the stage for chapter 12. When they go to Rehoboam, they have a right to be angry. Because we ain't getting, we ain't in the palace. <laughs> if this is supposed to be for the people of Israel, we was not supposed to be back into enslavement. What's the point of us getting out from Egypt? Right. What makes you better than Egypt? The Egyptians. Mm -hmm. So they had a right to be mad. Just like the outsiders had a right to be mad too that they killed all the people. Okay? So this, when we get to chapter 12, now y'all see the stage. And now y'all see how everything is connecting. Just because we're not in that chapter does not mean that we just can forget everything that happened. Okay? It's still stuff connecting. We still pulling out a second sample. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. We still pulling out a first sample because it's still all connected. We still pulling out of uh, Genesis yeah. And Leviticus, yeah. Yeah. and 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 what they're doing right now, what Solomon was doing, was ha what happened in Judges, doing whatever he wanted to do. Mm -hmm. So let's not forget that this all connects. I just went to Ezekiel, and we did Ezekiel in what three years. Yeah, it all connects. It makes this word smaller. Okay, the reason I I went over the tribes, Nancy, you missed it, is because I need you to understand the dynamic of how we got here. And so when I'm talking about something, I don't want nobody to think, forget where we got, how we got here. Okay? So, we're going to start chapter 12 next week. Um, and how, how I missed this, how I missed this, chapter 12 is going to be very rich. And we're going to talk about it. You need to keep, um, on the bottom of this, you need to uh, add Ray a bomb to this because I forgot to add him. And we need we need to do this chart so we can kind of know who we're talking about and what time and things of that sort. Okay? Yeah. <clears throat> Everybody understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Okay. Before I pray, anybody have any questions? I'm going, I know I went fast, but it was a lot that we had to get to. Everybody understand why the, the tribes were important for me to go over. Does everybody understand where we at? We're coming to in chapter 12. Everybody see the mirrors of Moses, the mirror of Samuel, the mirror of David, the, the mirror of all of that, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's a lot. And you know, one thing about the Edomites, you know, the Edomites are Esau's kids, right? Esau has always been at war with Jacob. Yeah. That's true. He's always been at war with Jacob. Because of his birthright. Yeah. Yeah, because he lost his birthright. His kids have always been. Yeah. <coughs> war with yeah. uh, Jacob. So 
it's like it continues. I mean, think about this. We're talking about, what, six, seven, eight hundred years? Uh-huh. And you would think they, they, would, they would be not mad, but they are mad because they believe that they should be in this position and not not uh, Jacob's kids. I mean, no, no. Did I say that right? Yeah. 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 Oh, I did say that right. Okay. Yeah. Not Jacob's kids. They believe they should be in position. Yeah. So they're going to continue to fight. Yeah, he saw their uncle. But at the end of the day, let's remember that God told David that his house was never going to be the sword was never in his house. And that and exactly. Solomon had an opportunity to delay it and didn't take advantage of it. So then then everybody's like, well, why in the New Testament they talk negatively about Saul, but David did worse? Because David repented. It's all about that repentant heart. And that's exactly what we were got um Pastor was talking about on Sunday. It's the repentant heart. It's the turning away. You know, and acknowledging what you did. Solomon never did. It never says, now I don't know what's in the book of Solomon. Right. But it, I bet you it didn't say he repented. No. <laughs> um, so we need to we setting that stage for chapter 12. Okay. I gave y'all the packets. If not, um, Pastor has it on the email. It's the reason why I gave y'all this material so you can have a refresher. Everything is building on each other. Amen. 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 Heavenly Amen. Father, we come right now, God. We just thank you. We thank you for your revelation. We thank you for your word. We thank you for your word being so rich and connecting. God, we just thank you. And God, let us get a lesson from Solomon. Let us not idolize the things in our lives, the tangible things, and focus on you, God. Because we know the tangible things can leave us, God. Let's not idolize our houses, our cars, our jobs, our children, our materialistic <clears throat> things, God. Let's, I, we, we need to worship you in spirit and truth, God. We thank you for your son, Jesus, God. We thank you for your Holy Spirit, God. We thank you for your word. Because your word does not go void. So we, God, we thank you in, in the Jesus' name. We ask you for safety and health. Yes. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you for tuning in to the Walk in Truth Christian Fellowship Church broadcast on the WITRN network. Come join us every Sunday at 9 a.m. Central Standard Time for Sunday worship. Bible study is held on Tuesdays at 11 a.m and 7 p.m. Central Standard Time. We are located at 3006 North Lindbergh Boulevard Suite 711, St. Louis, Missouri, 63074. All are welcome and we look forward to seeing you soon.